Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is hearts, and I thought it would be fun to show how you might use the surprise ball pop-up just as a generic base to be able to make essentially like a billboard. I made a circle-shaped billboard and decorated it as a valentine, but of course this is a very generic technique. The first thing I did was to assemble a surprise ball in the usual manner. I used a pretty thick red cardstock. If you are new to this die set, go ahead and watch the die assembly video on it, and I will go ahead and link that at the end of this video. The only thing different than usual assembly is that I did not add a brad inside the ball because I do not plan to have this one spin. So I have it fully assembled and realized that I wish my rubber band was a little tighter, so this is a great time to show this trick. Okay, collapsing the ball a little bit, I can look inside and find the rubber band side and see which side has the slit. It's the other side that I want to work on this rubber band from. That is important. If I reach in and grab that rubber band on the side that has the slit, I will pull it right out of the ball. But on the side that does not have the slit, I can use tweezers to pull just one section of the rubber band out of the ball. And then what I want to do is I want to stretch that around two fingers like I'm tying off a balloon and just try to get it through the center there. This is a great time for the tweezers to be able to grab the end. And what I'm looking to do is just add a knot in that rubber band. And then when I collapse it and put it back in, it will just really, really tighten it up. Okay, since the ball is going to be used generically, it has very little decorating required, just the hexagon on the top of the ball to cover up the hole. That little die comes in the set. And then on the bottom, remember I didn't add the brad, and instead what I'm going to do is attach it permanently onto the largest of our crosshatch circles. And by doing that in the flat position, I'll be able to easily center the circle on the bottom of the surprise ball. Okay, I have another one of those large crosshatch circles to act as my billboard, and then I'm going to decorate that using our love charms. I've cut 12 stitched hearts to go around the perimeter. On four of those, they're going to get that included arrow, which I've cut out of a red glitter cardstock. Now to help me get even placement on my hearts, I'm going to mask off an area of my mat that is five inch square, and then center my crosshatch circle in the middle of that, just using the grid to make sure that it looks like it's centered, temporarily tape that down. I'm going to start with one of my arrow hearts, and I've added some glue to the bottom half of that heart, but I'm avoiding the arrow because I would still like to be able to move the arrow around later. And I'm just going to get that up at the top of the circle so that the top of the heart touches my tape. And I repeat that process with my other three arrow hearts, putting one on each side and one on the bottom. And I'm using my grid and my tape to make sure that I get good placement on those. The tape was my guide for my first four hearts, but the rest of them need an interior guide circle. So I've gone down to the next size crosshatch circle. I've cut it out of some scrap white cardstock. Then I'll just temporarily tape that down onto the red one so that it's centered. And then I can use that as a guide for the rest of my hearts. Once again, my glue will just go on the bottom half of those hearts. And I'm going to fit two hearts in between each of the arrowed hearts, just making sure that the tips of the hearts touch that inner guide circle. I'm also making sure that I place them beneath the arrows so I can slide the arrows out of the way as necessary to get the hearts in. Once all the hearts are attached, then I can remove my white guide circle. My favorite glue is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive. I dispense it using our fine tip bottles and you can find both of those items on our website. For a greeting, I've chosen Happy Valentine's Day, one of our big script words, and I've stacked up two layers of white cardstock and then just glued that in the center. The Love Charm set also includes these conversation hearts that actually cut the words Love You and Be Mine right into the heart. I've cut each one twice, but I am not planning on using them as charms, so I'm going to remove the holes at the top. One of my favorite ways to highlight those words is to use a brayer and some ink and then just lightly roll across the hearts. And I can do that a couple times from different directions. And then what it'll do is it'll just leave the words themselves, the original white, but the rest of the heart will be colored in by the ink. Then I glue my finished conversation hearts to my piece. And then I can position the arrows where I like them and glue down the tails. To add my finished billboard onto the surprise ball, I just need the adhesive in one section of the surprise ball only. 
and then I just want to line up the billboard over the top of the surprise ball so that it will attach to that glue. Now at this point my card could be done. This makes a really cute little display piece and it would be fun just to flatten it down, put it in an A7 envelope and mail it. When it comes out of the envelope it just pops up into this little display. And as you can imagine that could be any theme. Now what I decided to do was to trap the billboard inside a card. So what I started with is a piece of red cardstock, five and a half inches tall by 11 inches long, and then I scored that cardstock at two and three quarters from either end, creating a gatefold card. I decorated my inner panel of the card with a piece of pattern paper before gluing in my billboard. I'm going to make these little fold over finishing pieces. And the way I did it is I started with a piece of cardstock five and a half inches by inch and a half scored up the middle for folding. And then I'm using the stitched scalloped edge die from our tropical scene set to cut both sides. The papers I'm using on my card are just from my stash, so they're a couple years old, but there are always such great pattern papers out there. So just whatever you wanna to find to fit on the front of those flaps, that size should be two and a half by five and a quarter. Now, since this is a Valentine's card and I plan to deliver it in person, I don't have to worry about the bulk of the closure. So I'm going to create a fun one using these large beads, some thin elastic and some ribbon. Okay, I have a bead strung onto my elastic and then I'm going to use the card itself to decide how long the elastic needs to be. Then I'm going to tie off the ends of that elastic into just a regular knot. Okay, and then I'm going to add another knot in the elastic and I'm pretty much just going to split the difference between the bead on the one end and the knot on the other end so that I have a second knot and it's essentially about halfway down the piece. I've added strong tacky tape to a piece of decorative ribbon that I'm going to weave that between the bead and the first knot and then trap the elastic into the tape as I fold the ribbon over and onto itself. And I like to pull on the bead as I do this so that that first knot is right at the fold of the ribbon. Okay, I repeated that to make a second piece. And then what I wanna do is just weave those beads around each other and then place those in the center to see where the ends of my ribbon are. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stretch those out to the side. And I added a strong tacky tape to the ends of the ribbon, basically from where the knot, where I can feel that knot in the ribbon, out to the end. So just the outer ends are going to be actually pressed down and attached to the card. Now while I've been working on that closure, I've had my card clipped closed, but I'll go ahead and remove that clip now so that I can test out the closure. Make sure that putting the beads over the top of each other, sitting side by side, is enough tension to keep the card closed, but then when you open it, it will spring up. Now, even though I used tacky tape, I decided I wanted a little extra insurance on that closure that it can't come apart. So I'm going to open up the card and get my ribbon over the top of a piercing mat and then pierce down through the ribbon and elastic just next to that first knot and then add a decorative brad. And then I'll just repeat that process for the other flap. Once I have both my brads on, then I can open up the card and add that decorative paper to the inside flaps, which will also cover up the brad prongs. Once my paper is on the inside of the flaps, then I can go ahead and add those scalloped finishing strips over the edges of the card. Just a couple more charms from the Love Charm set to finish out the card. The little love letter on the front of the card, and then as you open it, I dangled the lips charm off of the left side of the billboard. So it just dangles there as the card opens. One more crosshatch circle inside the card as a place to write a personal greeting. Then to operate the closure, it's just one bead over the other. My finished card measures five and a half inch square. Now I plan to deliver it in person so I don't mind the bulk of the bead closure, but if you wanted to mail a card like this, I might suggest swapping out for something lower profile, which might be a belly band or a tie closure or some magnets. This billboard technique with the surprise ball pop-up die set is really quite generic and can be translated into any theme. Check the description box below this YouTube video to find supply links and a link to the blog post. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenburniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.